Good morning, North Little Rock, and welcome to today's show. I'm your host, James Thompson, and today we'll be talking to basketball, specifically about North Little Rock basketball. And to talk about it will be a former player and the longtime clock operator for the North Little Rock Charging Wildcats, Gary Stevens. Gary, it's going to be an exciting week. I love this this time of the year. This uh, you've, you've already played for your seedings. You've had your conference games for your seedings. You've played some tournaments around the state for additional seedings, and now it's time. Now it's time for the state tournament. State tournaments are starting all around the state. The ones that we're going to be pointing in on are the 6A tournaments, boys and girls, that'll be in Bryant this week. They'll start Wednesday. Uh, first, talk about the girls. The girls will start, they'll actually kick the tournament off at 1 o'clock Wednesday. I think they play Rogers Heritage. Girls will have to win three games to be able to make it to Hot Springs for the finals. Uh, turning to the boys, the boys have a number one seed. So they draw by straight to Friday. They will play Friday against the winner of, I believe, Bentonville and Conway. Uh, if the boys win two games, they're in Hot Springs for the finals. So this is the time of the year that uh, everybody shoots for. It's been a fantastic year for the North Florida boys. They're ranked number, ranked number one in the state. Uh, it's a pretty familiar uh, spot for them over the last few years. It is. They also, I noticed the other day, they're ranked number 24th in the country, uh, which is a good ranking uh, for them. 24th in the country. That's, that's fantastic for them. But they have had a good year. North Little Rock lost last Friday night to Fort Smith Northside. Which that was the only loss, the only conference loss of the year for them. Uh, but you know what? I, having played ball as much as I have, Every loss is not a bad loss. Sometimes I think you tend, if you're undefeated, to get the big head. Uh, we're, un we're undefeatable. The team can't come in and beat us. So when a team does beat you, it sort of sets you back where you need to be and gets your mind right for tournament time. So losing that game wasn't, wasn't a bad thing. Uh, North Little Rock comes in, like you say, they're number one. You've been, that. You've been in that situation as a player. Um, what pressure does that put on a team Everybody's expecting you to, to win. And like you said, it's not an easy task. The thing about being number one, and of course you want to be number one, but the thing about being number one is that date that everybody plays you is circled. Their calendar circles that date. We're playing North Little Rock. They're number one. They're going to give that extra effort. So you get everyone's best shot. That's the pressure of being number one. What's North Little Rock got to do to, to win in the tournament, I mean, what's the strengths of this team? Uh, who will, they, who do you think that will be their their main uh, uh, team that they've got to, to try to beat in the tournament? Uh, Fort Smith Northside's always a tough will be a tough draw for them, but they will not face Fort Smith Northside until Hot Springs if they both make it that far. Uh, Bentonville is a good team from the other division. Uh, the, the the strengths of North Little Rock this year. They've got a good inside game. Uh, they've got a 6'10 kid who the Razorbacks are after. In fact, the Razorbacks already offered him a scholarship. Uh, good ball player. He, uh, he, once again, he's a sophomore, so you know he's got a lot to learn, but he's, he's got uh, good skill sets right now. Good guard play. We have good guard play. Another ninth grader that starts for uh, Johnny Rice, who's the coach of North Little Rock. First time a ninth grader's ever started for Johnny. Uh, have a ninth grader that uh, has also been offered by Arkansas, so we have a we have some good good strengths, but we are young and we're still learning. Talking about Johnny Rice, uh, he's been very successful. Uh, where uh, what what do you see in him as a, as a head coach? You've played for you played for a really great head coach at North Little Rock, and you've seen a lot of great coaches come and go. What what does Johnny bring to the table? As you mentioned, I, I run the clock for the high school basketball team, so I'm right there in the middle. I hear everything. I hear the opposing coach. I hear Johnny. I hear what they say, how they talk, how they coach. The thing that impresses me about Johnny, he is a uh, he, he doesn't he doesn't lose his cool. He doesn't go crazy. He uh, he does his chew, uh, the right amount of chewing at timeouts, and he gets on to them when they make a mistake. But I think. The thing Johnny and Daryl Fimple, who's the girls' coach, the thing they have going for them, they love those kids. The kids know they love them. 
And while they're chewing on them, they still know the coach really cares about me. And that's so important for a coach to have that relationship with his team. Gary, where are the feeder schools uh, that are providing um, the talent for North Little Rock? You know, years ago we had three junior highs, and we all knew who was going to North Little Rock High School. Where is the feeder? What is the feeder school now? What what uh, wh where is he looking for his next star basketball players? Well, you have they're coming from the ninth grade, which is on the high school campus. High school campus has ninth through twelfth grade. So, and I also run the clock for the ninth grade teams. Uh, that's that's where their group's coming up. In fact, as I mentioned, we have a ninth grader starting for Johnny who was pulled up from the ninth grade team this year, that he would be playing ninth grade ball if, if he wasn't starting for Johnny on the varsity. So the players that we have are coming in from the high school or the junior high teams, which that would be seventh and eighth grade. Of course, I'm dating myself. That's called middle school now, not junior high. Uh, tell us again – North Little Rock will play their first tournament game, state tournament game, when? The girls will play at 1 o'clock Wednesday against Rogers Heritage. The boys will play the winner of the Bentonville-Conway game. I'm not sure of the game time. That will be Friday. If the boys win Friday, they'll play Saturday uh, in the semifinals. And if they win the semifinal game, they will go to Hot Springs. As I mentioned, the girls would have to win three games to go to Hot Springs. Can you talk just a little bit about the girls' game and what, what we expect in the state tournament with the girls this year? What kind of season have they had? The girls have been up and down. He's got a young team. In fact, uh, Daryl himself will tell you, uh, when he walks on that court, he's not sure what he's going to get. Uh, and they are very young. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many seniors they have. Maybe one or two seniors is it. Uh, he's starting a young group of, group of girls. So once again, when you're, when you're starting a young team, you're trying to mold them in the fashion that you want them, but it takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. So being young, you might, uh, you might see them really good one night and not so good the next night. Yeah. Gary, you've seen a lot of changes in, in high school basketball over the years. You've watched a lot of basketball. Uh, tell us about what changes are coming, what changes you've seen, does it make it a better game than the game that you played uh, as a high school uh, player in North Little Rock? Well, obviously, the, the, the players are better. Uh, the, the speed of the game is so fast nowadays. I, I jokingly tell people, you know, while I'm running the clock, sometimes I might get a crick in my neck, my head going back and forth as, as fast as they can go. Uh, the biggest difference is the, the fact that you're, you've got bigger players, faster players, but also parts of the game, like we have a three-point shot now that I didn't have when I was playing. The three-point shot has changed the game dramatically because you can be trailing that by nine in the last two minutes, and all it takes is three trips up and down that court and uh, the three three-point shots, and it's a tie ball game. So you're never really out of it. One change I think that's coming is the uh, shot clock. I know some people hate to hear this, but uh, I'm in charge of the table crew down at Pine Bluff for the King Cotton Classic. And we use a shot clock down there. A lot of preseason tournaments use a shot clock through the permission of the AAA. But what it does is speeds the game up a little bit more because you only have so many seconds to get rid of the ball to, to take your shot. So that's going to change when that comes. And, and I know it's coming. I don't know when. I don't know how far down the road. But the shot clock will be instituted at some point. Gary, UALR clinched the Sun Belt Conference this past week. Uh, Daryl Walker has really turned that program around in two years. Um, uh, and so you have seen every game. You are the clock operator for UALR also. So give us your insight into, is this UALR team good enough to make it to the NCAA tournament? Coach Walker has done an outstanding job. He, the guy is so full of energy. Uh, he, he does a wonderful job in communicating, sometimes rather harshly, but he does a good job in communicating. Uh, and he, he's taken a team, he's molded a team that is relatively young. Once again, not, not many seniors on that team. So he's taken a team that's relatively young, won the Sun Belt. With that win, he's got a number one seed. He goes straight to the semifinals in New Orleans. So two games... If he wins two games, he's in the NCAA. What 
the players that he has recruited. What uh, what does he look for, Daryl's style of coaching, uh, and what kind of basketball do they play? So people that have not seen ULR play this year. They play a very fast-paced game. Uh, Coach Walker is constantly, I hear him saying, push it, push it, when they get a rebound. He wants to get the ball up court, try to get an easy basket before the other team sets up their defense. Then if once the defense gets sets up, then they start running their patterns. He looks for players that are sort of lean, uh, can jump, uh, have speed, and that's what he's been going with so far. Uh, he's done a good job on his recruiting. And once again, as I mentioned, he has a young team, so uh, it's not like he's going to be graduating a lot of guys this year. Well, just get your opinion. The Sun Belt Conference winner, of course, has to play in the tournament. And basically what has happened over the years, you've got to win the tournament to get to the NCAA tournament, regardless of how good your team is. Uh, your thoughts about that? <sighs> Winning the Sun Belt Conference to me, is, is very important. Now, now it does give you a better seed when you win it, but you still got to go win that con the conference championship before you go to the NCAAs. It's too bad there's not a way to allow that conference winner, the season, overall season winner, to go to the NCAAs, and maybe the conference championship winner to go too. I know that's too many teams, way too many teams, but, but I just hate to see sometimes a team, and we've seen this before, a team roll through the conference, win the conference, and then get upset in the tournament and not go to the NCAAs. Turning to the girls, Joe Foley won his 800th game. This has not been one of the great seasons for the UALR women, but as everyone knows, Coach Foley sometimes really can turn it around in tournament time. We talk about young teams. Joe has got two seniors on that team. Once again, a very young team. At the present time, I believe they're tied for the fourth seed, which is very important. They have two games left. In fact, I'll have them Thursday night and Saturday afternoon of this, this coming week. The third and fourth place seeds, well, let me, let me back up. The first and second place seeds go straight to New Orleans, just like the men. The third and fourth place seeds will play games at their home court. So if UALR can win, say, one of the two games they're playing and get a fourth seed, they will have a home game next week on their home court uh, to be able to go to New Orleans. He has done a fantastic job, and uh, I think that, that uh, people who know Joe Foley uh, know his history. Um, he's just, uh, he, he, he's done wonders when he was at Arkansas Tech and then certainly at ULR. Um, I think you all are very fortunate to, to have Joe Foley as a head coach. He is a, a quiet coach. You don't you don't hear a lot of him. Uh, you once again sitting there, I hear everything. So, but he, he st his his demeanor is quiet. Now during timeouts, he can get a little loud, but for the most part, he has good demeanor. The, the, once again, the girls know that he loves them and cares about them. So when he's he is chewing on them, you know, it goes back to the fact. They know he cares about them. And to me, that's so important for that coach to have that relationship, whether it's high school or whether it's college, that the girls know you really do care about me. Thank you, Gary, for your insight on that. Gary, about three weeks ago, unexpectedly, North Little Rock lost its uh, football coach over the last five years, Jamie Mitchell. We learned that he has gone to coach high school football in Alabama. So where do we stand now um, in uh, North Little Rock's hiring of a new head football coach? Well, Coach Mitchell has uh, Coach Mitchell took us to four straight state championship finals. Did an outstanding job in bringing North Little Rock football up to where where we wanted it. He is now taking a job as a coach in Alabama High School, and he's not only the head football coach; he's also the athletic director there. So North Little Rock is now looking for a football coach. Uh, we've had quite a few applicants come in. It's my understanding that the way this process will work, those applic applicants will be probably pared down to five, roughly five, a number like that, and then there will be an interview process to bring those those uh, coaches in to uh, try to select select the, the, the best one for the program. It is my hope that we do get a coach who just picks up where Jamie left off and continue the, 
to, to keep the program at a high level that it is right now. You're the public address announcer for the last 50 years, so you have seen almost every uh, charging Wildcat football game, I guess, uh, over those that period of time. Uh, there's, there was a time when North Rock was very strong in football. There were some down years in football. When, when they hired Jamie, of course, no one knew him. Basically, he, was, he wasn't an Arkansas coach. What did, what did you see that he did that some other coaches weren't as successful as? Well, first of all, we, before Jamie, we had Brad Molding, who uh, he started bringing the program up. He went to the state tournaments every year, uh, did a good job. I tell you, off-season's what's so important in football. And Brad started off-season program to get the kids in shape and to get them thinking about football and to get them geared up for the season. Jamie came in and just sort of doubled the efforts on off-season. He had a really tough, good off-season program that he ran here at North Little Rock. I was very impressed watching those kids work out during the offseason. So I think it's important that whoever we bring in has a strong offseason program to, to keep up what we've had going all this time. Coach Mitchell brought in uh, or played a lot of teams from out of state early on. Uh, his record probably could have been even better, <laughs> but he, he, he went out and played the best teams in Memphis, um, some other teams around the country. Uh, do you think that will continue with, with the next coach? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't seen the schedule yet for next year, so I'm not exactly sure who will be playing. But I'm, I'm hoping that whoever we play will be the best, the best teams possible. We haven't played teams out of the West that much, the Western Division. Uh, the thought process there being, and this is their thought press process also, not to play a team that they have to possibly play in the state state tournament or a state championship game. So that's one reason you don't see a crossover between the divisions too much. Right, and it seemed like over the last two or three years that it has really become a bright North Little Rock rivalry. It has. Uh, like I said, North Little Rock's been in the finals four years in a row now. Uh, we've won one of those games. Bright has been there two years now and won, won both, both of the times they were there. So... It has been, and being out of the same division makes it even more of a rivalry. Yeah, it, I mean, for years it was. It looked like the hotbed of football was North Arkansas. And then all of a sudden now, over the last three years, it's kind of changed with Bryant and North Little Rock. So so the talent maybe is here. Uh, it, you know, I, I know I talked to some people and they said, well, Northwest Arkansas has, has just more players, more good coaches. More, but it seems to me maybe that the Bryant and North Little Rock uh, – Rivalry has maybe kind of caused, caused the other schools or, or been with the other schools to say we need to get on we need to get on the bandwagon too. Yeah, I think you know, for, as you mentioned, for a long time your champion came out of the West. In fact, a lot of times the two finalists would be from the West, and there was sort of a drought in Central Arkansas. And then the North Little Rock started their winning process. It's been good to see with now Bryant. Uh, also following North Little Rock and winning two state championships. So the last three state championships have been from Central Arkansas. Gary, there's a new high school in Little Rock, and uh, they will be playing for the first season uh, coming up in September. And we they're on our schedule. We'll be playing them this year. Uh, Daryl Patton is the new coach there. Daryl was at Fayetteville for many years, uh, went to Boxite for the last two years, and now he's at Southwest. And Southwest High School is a combination of uh, McClellan and J.A. Fair. So you'll have students and football players from those two schools uh, attending Southwest now. Looking forward to a new season. Yes, I am too.